Ladies and gentlemen, three Wise Man Wednesday is happening today, and we happen to be joined by a very special guest. You may have heard the news of a man getting arrested at a Trump rally in California this past Sunday. That man was Vim Miller. He is with America Happens, an awesome media network, and he is joining us today. Be sure to smash that like button. Be sure to share this out. Let's get some eyes on the prize. If I can get the music going, I am having some technical difficulties. Now we're rocking. Uh, yeah. yeah, we, we it's Gucci. Crypto blood, Detroit flow, screaming from the D, knowing what the show indicates a wrong point. OG since 12, invested in trade, living life like a pro. A rucker, Jerry, and just blood too. Bad motherfucker in a good way, boo. Got my eyes on the charts, ain't no time to sleep. Get that money, gotta keep it creep. That's my crypto blood, just the toast is on my line. Stacking my coin, got the market on my mind. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum too. Cash is king, but I'm looking for a new move. I know the culture of the market, like the streets. Got my finger on the pulse, can't nobody beat. I see the trends, I see the flow. Got my strategies in place, you know. Yo, it's NYBZ on the mic coming through the mist Talking crypto and privacy things you can't dismiss YouTube's wild jungle, I'm the lion, can't resist Guiding through the blockchain, teaching about the risk Mind your biz, don't miss Eeny, meeny, mighty biz, we on a privacy blitz Except in the mist, dropping knowledge with no tricks YouTube to the wallet, keep it tight, no weights Click clack, I hack the facts, that's how I attack From Bitcoin to Monero, stacking privacy back YouTube's got eyes, but I'm the cloak in disguise And why we on the rise, educating the wise Mind your biz, don't miss, eeny, meeny, mighty biz We on the privacy blitz Except in the mist, dropping knowledge with no tricks YouTube to the wallet, keep it tight, no weights Rice TVX, the mic's live wire. American pit bull, real gold buyer. Sound money advocate, rights defender. In the crypto arena, he's the top contender. From the gritty streets of the digital age, Rice lays wisdom, chapter and page. Silver gold, he scores only the bold. Land life and liberty, these values hold. Constitution, deep dive, knowledge, revival. Navigate the system critical for survival. Rice engraved like inscriptions on metal. Pit bull in the game, left foot on the pedal. Oh, I had that thing on a loop, man. Now I gotta go ahead and end that track. And I wanna fade it out to do it a little bit professionally. Yeah, it's crypto blood. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for tuning in and joining us. We are once again joined by a very special guest. I want to go ahead and bring him up on stage. We now, are joined by the man himself. What did you want to say, Blood? Now, Rice, you know, we said we we're going to start, you know, doing these surprise guests. And, and, and brother, you knocked it out the park with this. Appreciate Appreciate it. I, I would have <laughs> yeah. loved for this to have been something GXA, which we'll touch on later. But uh -huh. uh, with, that, with that being said... I'm going to go ahead and bring in our guest of honor. We are joined by Mr. Vim Miller, the infamous one. How are you doing today, Vim? Thanks for joining us. Uh, great to be on the show, man. I actually really like the music you guys were playing. Which artist was that? AI artist, my friend. It's taking over. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that AI. Yeah, yeah Mind Your Biz yeah, created your those biz. tracks using use AI. Wow. Yeah, no, it was Crazy. kind of funny. And what the saddest thing is, I mean, on the one track, I was like, hey, you know, you could take a little bit of inspiration from maybe Wu-Tang or something. Right. And it, it was right. like, it didn't even, it wasn't even clever about it. It just like came out sounding exactly just the same. Just like but, Method Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was great. And um, so I want to let everybody know, you know, I got in touch with uh, Vim yesterday. He's been really cool. We talked last night and he agreed to do this live stream uh, like less than 12 hours ago, basically, or right around 12 hours ago. So I appreciate you accommodating us, man, um, with this okay. whole situation and story. It's crazy. Uh, before we begin, I want to let everybody know that myself, Crypto Blood, and Mind Your Biz, we're all live streaming on our YouTube channels, on all of our X accounts, and my Rumble account. Make sure you're following all of us. Links are down below in each other's video descriptions for each other's socials, including all the socials for Vim, as well as America Happens, because 
there's a documentary that came out about two weeks ago, and I think that might be part of your problems. Uh, we'll get into <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. But you, do you mind introducing yourself to the audience a little bit, and then, um, and then I guess we can maybe get your perspective of what happened um, this past Sunday when you were arrested. Yeah, sure. Uh, what kind of, uh, how many seconds should I go with the bio? Because there's a short version, the really short version, and the longer version. Well, I'm definitely going to, I would say uh, yeah, short, long... medium. Well, okay, we... the medium, medium rare. Because medium plus have... or medium rare? What do you want, Rice? We have your statement. I like medium rare. We have your statement. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go medium rare, but I definitely want people to check out the full video about your statement about what yes. happened that you put out um, two days ago. So we'll have links down below for that, plus the update about what happened at your parents' house. But yeah, dude, you got the floor. We want to help uh, your cause as much as possible. I think mm -hmm. this is, well, my my opinion, this is false allegations. Uh, it's not coincidental, uh, mm -hmm. but I'll let you explain who you are. Um, take as much time as you like, and please give us your perspective of what happened Sunday. So my background is, uh, I'm, I, you know, so I've been doing documentary work or investigative journalism, music videos, all, kind of all around artists. That's what I consider myself. And uh, started uh, first started really kind of documenting stuff in 92 with the L.A. riots. I was 17 years old and I went down there to take photographs because I was living in L.A. and really got, you know, I mean, just the shit yelled out of me by uh, my folks for really doing something stupid because I could have got killed out there under the circumstances. But I had a passion basically for reality and documenting stuff and making films and all that. In uh, 2001, I broke through as a music video director, directed music videos for people like DMX, Master P. I actually oh, worked with Ghostface, Kill Ghostface Killer and um, Black Thought from The Roots for a video mm -hmm. I did with Executioners. I mentioned those guys because the tracks you were playing definitely had that kind of vibe to it, you know? Um, did that for about uh, seven years. John Mayer is another big one. Uh, worked with Trey Songs uh, as a director, you know. And then 2008, I transitioned to creating and selling TV shows, a lot of reality shows, a lot of documentary shows. Uh, in the midst of all this, I launched, uh, after 9-11, I launched this thing called the America Happens Network. And then in 2007, we went viral. We were uh, interviewed on uh, uh, Young Turks at the time. I was definitely much more of a Democrat at that time, just because I had grown up in the George W. Bush era, and I thought that guy was out of control. Uh, everything he did was just the steps that were taken to reach the point where we are at this country, in this country. And I kind of see him... You know, all these kind of, um, I guess, presidents that are really deep state type presidents or military industrial complex presidents. And but then was disappointed with Obama. And by the way, when Obama came, I thought, you know what, I don't want to do America Happens anymore. This guy's going to save us, you know, and I actually, believe it or not, campaigned for him. I got I made a lot of phone calls for him, you know, because I was reacting to the whole George W. Bush thing, which, by the way, 2000 was a stolen election with the hanging chads. And then that got us yeah. uh, psycho, you know, psychological warfare into getting these computers when obviously they're using these dumb 1800 style machines. It should have just been better ways of doing, you know, hand voting and stuff, right? Not introducing machines that have algorithms and all this crazy stuff. It's obvious what they're doing there. You know, with one person, by the way, I know I'm jumping around right now. I talked about uh, with this one person that's a programmer is like the program for counting votes is something that a 12 year old could do, you know, a programmer. And the fact that it's made so complex and there's incremental voting when there's no such thing as incremental humans uh, is indication that they're doing some shady ass shit. Right. Yeah. So then I, you know, I'm kind of doing this kind of mainstream life with, you know, selling shows and producing shows for A&E um, and Discovery History, Netflix and just a whole bunch of networks, MTV, all these places. Uh, show running and also was I was brought on to help develop programming for um, uh, Vice Media when they launched their Vice Network over there is when I actually and they just my, went down the drain. Yeah, I, I was there. I was there, bro. Like I basically what they did is they hired a bunch of purple haired people yep. uh, mm -hmm. and replaced all the professionals. And then the content got really shitty. I mean, it was terribly run. It was just, and, and that was like my first woke experience where something that I was passionate about, which was the early vice media of the early 
yeah. 2000s, uh, you know, when it was the magazine and, you know, Shane Smith going around war zones and stuff, which, yeah. by the way, that's what I was doing at the time. That's why they brought me in, because between 2001 and 2008, I was going to these war zones. Now, by the way, you know, again, jumping around, they, they talk about my fake IDs and all that stuff's BS. I have two passports. One of the passports, I did, I put a different last name because my birth last name is, uh, well, my birth certificate last name is Vem Miller Yanofkin, and Yanofkin is a clear Christian Armenian last name, and it wouldn't be prudent to go to uh, Muslim war zones where I went on multiple occasions with that last name, because that's pretty much a death sentence, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, 2018, between 2015 and 2018, I really definitely got into Donald Trump and what he was doing is just... Uh, honestly punk rock guy you know what i mean it's like i look at it like ultimate you know he's a suit guy and but it was definitely like he was a guy that you know was going to go there and you know break up this really corrupt system uh and then we relaunched america happens in 2000 i ran for office in 2022 so i was kind of incrementally working on america happens and then after i ran for office which i secured a lot of votes surprisingly enough i got like almost 22 percent of the vote 31 percent was a winning margin and uh i went up against two very well-known candidates just by virtue of locking on a lot, a lot of doors i was able to actually run a respectable campaign then i basically uh reached like really pushed america happens at the at that at that point and really the goal of america America happens. Our motto has been rage against the mainstream media since 2007. Uh, is really because I had seen what the mainstream media looks like. I know that like the mainstream media is dominated by law firms and PR firms, and they create most of the stuff. And I've seen it. Pharmaceuticals. Uh, and pharmaceuticals, and now pharmaceuticals, you know, definitely more like in the last, I'd say, decade and a half. Um, but, you know, it's. Uh, it's a mess. It's a propaganda machine, you know, and uh, people that are well connected to get news stories out that kind of become headline news. And I know I've done this because when I was creating and selling TV shows, the way I broke into that business is I hired a PR company to blow up a story. These people got on People Mag, the cover of People Magazine, were all over the media, started a you know bidding war, and you know I I was like, okay, this this is all hype, you know what I mean? Like so. Uh, with me, with America Happens, we produce a lot of content that basically exposes stuff, talks about stuff that the name, ma mainstream media really doesn't touch. And I think my experience right now is a is a is an interesting part of that because you know I've heard from a couple of outlets that they're scared to have me on because their legal department has issues. But yet you have this Sheriff Bianco out there. Uh, who's the one spreading 100% lies, opening up legal liability for these mainstream media outlets, whereas my story has been 100% genuine and true, and I have the evidence right now to back up everything I'm saying, and, uh, you know, uh, basically, like, once the body cams come out, I mean, it's already kind of, like, in terms of my, what my version, it's already, like, the credible version. It's like, I have the evidence right this second, right? But in terms of, you know, with the body cams, I think once that comes out, it just really, you know, I think what's going to happen is the sheriff is going to be investigated, dismissed, his deputy is going to be investigated, dismissed. And we found a lot of stuff so, out. So let me ask you about this situation and, and this sheriff. You know, usually I personally like sheriffs. They're, they're you know, they're mm -hmm. kind of independent. They, they Not all of them. A, a lot of them. A lot of them. But the, the thing is, do you think he just jumped the gun to to try to get attention on his um, his sheriff agency? Yeah. Or do you think it was something more nefarious? Well, with, I think I, I've come up with four options of what it could be. I think it's clearly one of these four options. One of the options is that the sheriff has governor aspirations and he thought like he's going to, you know, announce to the world that he caught the next Lee Harvey Oswald before he became right. president president. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure if he has political aspirations, having run for office, uh, political aspirations also means political consultants. Uh, which are often the worst kind of human being on the planet, which have emotional reactions. The sheriff's job is very simple. It's very black and white. Is it lawful or is it unlawful? That's it. Very simple job, right? And that's not what he did. And when you determine what is lawful and unlawful, there's something called evidence that helps you determine that. So for him to go up on stage and say a whole bunch of crap with no evidence, firstly, is like a level in, of incompetence that you should not have in that powerful position. 
You simply should not. It's a level of immaturity. And it's also, you know, we talk a lot of crap about Secret Service and Feds. Well, guess what? They were there, right? And in fact, yeah. this real quick, is, real quick, real yeah. quick. I hate to interrupt you, man. Have you real even part. have you talking to anybody at the Secret Service, FBI, any government agency on the federal level? No, because they had two opportunities to interrogate me. And this arresting officer said, they're going to interrogate you. You're, you know, uh, they, they want to know what your intentions are, blah, blah, blah. Three and a half hours in, they had an opportunity. They declined. Six and a half hours later uh, in, they had an opp opportunity to interview me. They declined again. And then uh, what was made a big hoopla of turned into this like misdemeanor ticket that I was given to after going through this hellish experience. And then the next morning I wake up and this guy's uh, accusing me of being an assassin of Donald Trump. Right. And uh, in, a, in that, he's, you know, everything's a lie. I mean, I don't know where to start. The $5,000 bonds a lie. I departed with a ticket. All this stuff about fake IDs and, you know, fake plates and all that stuff. Well, here's the thing. Okay. That's in conjecture and emotion. He might think, Oh, something is fake. But if it was fake and the Secret Service and the feds have seen it, those are felonies. Those are felony, felony, felony level crimes. But they give me a ticket about, you know, this discrepancy between Nevada law, which is in Nevada, you, you could have 14 bullets in your gun, in your mag. In uh, California, it's capped at 10. In Nevada, you could have your mag loaded, which is the way it should be because the criminals have it loaded. But in, uh, in yeah. California, mm -hmm. they add this like, you know, depending on how fast you are, they add like a second and a half to like four second lag so you could get shot in the head. And it's just this insanely communist kind of approach because oh, now yeah. the lawful gun owner is the victim. And I know why they did this, by the way, because I, and I haven't done my research on this, but living in L.A., we had a lot of... Um, what is it called? Uh, road rage shootings where people that had, you know, bullets in the chamber would lose their temper. And it's, you know, it's easy to just fire off versus there was one. Back. There was there was one deadly one just this past week in L.A. You know, and this is the thing of living in road the rage. world as it exists. Right. There is going to be that sort of thing. But how many people have died because now well, guns takes... don't kill people, man. People kill people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and, so... and 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 is there a quantification of how many people have died because now they added this three second lag to being able to fire a shot. So I believe when you do those numbers, probably 10 times, 100 times more people have died because of the stupid law than from the road rage. So there's not, it's all fear based. They give you fear, then they take away your rights. And we got to stop falling for this crap, like with the Patriot Act. And it's like every, you know, even now what they're trying to do to me, like they're trying to make me fear. And I was like, guys, you know what? Like there's two options here. Either like, uh, like I'm gonna kick your ass over this bullshit, or I, I, I fight dying, you know what I mean? And we got to stand up to these people and two people, people are too scared to take a stand like that. But fortunately, I got a lot of friends that are kind of of the same DNA as I am. And, um, you know, we're gonna have a fun time with this situation. So when, when do you think they put this assassination attempt framing on you that storyline when did that happen when the it, next day or did that happen that same it was, day it was it was saturday it was, i'm mistaken it was sunday it wasn't sunday it was saturday that he was arrested and i believe it was right after that that they had done the press release i can go back on um youtube and see because what i want to do them was what i want to do is try to connect some dots here because and i want to talk about this documentary bundy versus deep state mm -hmm. crazy documentary thank um, you um Thanks. Yeah, great, great. I think brother. Again, I think, I think <laughs> my personal uh, opinion is that is the root of his problems. Because, yeah, that's what I want to get to. You, I want to see you if finish, he thinks that. Did you finish the documentary, yeah. Blood? Yes. Okay, so we yes. know that uh, the main, I don't know if you want to call him a whistleblower. Mike Little, or what's was, his name? Was, yeah, yeah, Mike Little. He was poisoned or something happened to him that nobody could figure out what was wrong with him, and he died. Uh, he yeah, had spoiler, a, spoiler alert to anybody watching the live stream right now. You, you yeah. need to go watch all of this documentary from start to finish. Then you need to share it with a friend right and watch it again at a watch party. It's, it's right it's here on the website in americahappens.com, which will take you to the Rumble channel, and all the links, again, are down below. In and the I want there. them to, and I'm jumping over all over the place, but I want him to investigate and look into what's going on in Texas with a guy named Mix, uh, Mitch Drexler, I think. He's uh, uncovering the shit ton of stuff that's going on with property taxes, that that the, the assessment departments, and it's tied into the the um, the board of uh, the education, like the, the teacher union and all that. Like, it's crazy how they are stealing money from us 
um, through taxation on these properties and stuff. So I, I, we can talk offline. I want you to definitely look into that because it kind of mirrors what's going on with the Bundy uh, situation. But uh, go ahead. So I'm do you sorry. mind if I give you an email address real quick for that? For any of the viewers, if you got like exposés, you want to contact us, America Happens, just like the website, America Happens, just like it's written there, at protonmail.com. Send us anything, connect us with people. I mean, honestly, we're, we're part of the few uh, media companies that actually have the balls to pursue anything, you know, just like we did with the Mike Little one, which we, we always knew was a third rail, but... Uh, you know, the dude died, you know, he, he died in front of me. It's like at that point, I, you know, it was really go down the road of cowardice or simply tell the story as a storyteller would, you know? Well, and also I want to give like a, a little slight backstory is, you know, I'm friends with Ammon Bundy. I've had him on my show four times. Uh, when I found out about this, this documentary, I hit uh, Ammon up on Monday. I was supposed to interview him yesterday. We rescheduled it to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Ammon is dealing with a plethora of plot problems himself. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's been attacks on the the Bundy family as a whole, but with Ammon specifically, he I'm trying to see if I had those notes that I had for the interview were handy. Um, yeah, so 2014 was the Bundy standoff in Nevada. Mm -hmm. 2016 was the occupation of the National Wildlife Forest in Washington. 2020, he created People's Rights Network. That was the thing that connected people up in neighbor like the neighborhood organized defense system that website got taken down i'm assuming because of so in 2022 he ran for governor of idaho at first as a republican then as an independent then july of 2023 he lost a defamation case against saint luke's hospital which sued him for defamation and he ended up being sued for 52 or 53 million dollars they took his home they've taken everything he's just recently filed for bankruptcy he's, he's asked for um what they call uh there's a word for like trying to keep certain properties exclusions like clothes personal vehicles tools for work and saint luke's is actually blocking all of it they don't want they don't want the family to be able to even keep their fucking clothes so ammon's being attacked the rest of the family's still being attacked this guy who puts out a documentary, one of the guys in a documentary dies, and then the guy who directed and produced the documentary gets lumped up as supposedly the third assassination <laughs> attempt on Donald Trump. The guy right here that we're talking to. This is the craziest thing, man. Robert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, one thing I gotta say there. This is the way they. Th this is the way they do it, right? They want to fear. They want to just drain you, lawfare, and they have the system set up to do that. And you know, people are asking me, "Am I a sovereign citizen?" You know, I've been very clear. I'm not a sovereign citizen. I think the terminology on its own is an idiotic terminology. There's <laughs> other forms of law that we're not told about uh, that I think some people mistaken for the sovereign citizen thing. But let's dissect why people want to be sovereign. Could it be a great mystery that the system is so. Could you curse on the show, by the way? No, feel, feel, oh, feel yeah. free to say yeah. what the fuck yeah. you want. Could it, could it be that, that the <laughs> system is so fucked up and corrupt, as we're seeing right now, on every level, that these sovereign citizen things are necessary? It's necessary for a million people to show up on January 6th. People are pissed off. And yes, some people did some, you know, dumb things in, in at the Capitol, but. This is not coming from nowhere. Like, we're, And the way they do it is they dehumanize these people as if they're emotionless, as if they don't have any story. I bet you, you go through January 6th, you speak to everybody over there, and what you will find that is 90% of the people there were, in one way or another, affected by the corruption and systems like the bar, you know, systems like, you know, the way they have Congress set up now, the lobbies, all that stuff that essentially creates essentially this uh, umbrella of too much power of the federal government and um, lets them allow, you know, allows them, you know, when you watch the Bundy versus Deep State document, you'll see it gives them all the power to do corruption, takes us away from the founding father's vision of limited federal government, states power, steals our resources of we the people. And then if you say something about it, you become, you know, the third assassin for Donald Trump, you know? Yeah, well, then that was that was yesterday. How about today? when we're just coming to light, I guess it was September oh, 27th, yeah. right? That yeah. uh, the DOD revised their guidelines on how they'll be sh at yeah. least bare minimum sharing intel and other resources with uh, with civilian law enforcement in actions uh, or in in any kind of actions or any kind of a active Lethal conflict force. area, in, including citizens and uh, and and civilians uh, in the United States. Like, I saw that. This is new clarification just came out. 
I saw that last night after we were talking, Vim, and I said, "Hey, I'm 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 double I'm doing some double duty." There's a dude that, that's knocking on the door. I apologize. I got oh, you're good, man. You're good. If you need us to take yeah. you off, come, off come for on, in. no, no, I could I could, I could I could just go inside. Come on, and just lock the door behind you, sir. Okay, yeah. so yeah, this this is an out. I'll, I'll um, drop this in a chat so if people want to check this out themselves, I'll drop it in there now. You did or is that the original? Is that the full document? Because I got the I got the link directly to the DoD website. Can you can you drop it in the chat? Either yeah, the got you. private or live chat. No, I'll drop it to you. Because yeah, below this and this is yeah, I definitely I, I I'm not an expert in this subject, and that's where I have to trust other people that understand these type of type of documentations. But it's basically, um, what is it called? Uh, directive DoD Directive five two four zero point oh one, and that's the first page of it. That's the second page, but it's talking about force on civilians actually this is a 16 this is a 16 page document they skip ahead to show you uh to show you this this section of it so that you can you can jump to the meat and potatoes there's a bunch of other stuff that they that they revise there's been a few revisions over over time um i think at least once in 2016 once in 2000 so this is a this is a working document the dod needs to use for for in, intel sharing but only recently did they make the change that we're we're all reading and thinking, you know, presuming, interpreting to mean that they can then more easily use lethal force against civilians. Yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of these things aren't pointing in a good direction. I know a lot of people are hoping that if Donald Trump is to be elected, that a lot of these things would be fixed and solved. So, um... and that's what I want to ask Vim. So, I, I'm a Trump supporter. I think Rice is coming on to that I side him my stands on on trump yeah uh i don't know where the hell seth i don't know where he stands I don't know. i'm, I'm a, a freedom a freedom privacy and, and sovereignty maximalist if if it if it gives the individual better sovereignty or better freedom or protects their their rights better i'm i'm for that that person that that so movement. so my question to you vim is like you know I'm, i i like a lot of what trump is, is talking about his policies from a business standpoint even even you know foreign uh policies right with mm -hmm. tariffs and stuff, I think a lot of those tactics work. Um, but as far as a deep state, do you think he will be able to actually drain the swamp this time? I know he will attempt to, but he only has four years. That's yeah, that's my is... thing with with Trump. Like a lot of people think he's going to be the savior. Yeah, this and, is and the, the panacea, and it, I just don't see it. That, this, is, this is the thing. It's like they put Trump as a singular person, right? Okay. Now, there's a lot of things. Okay, so Bundy versus Deep State, right? We released that documentary a week later. Donald Trump's in Las Vegas making a speech, and he starts talking about the land fraud in Las Vegas, the overreach oh, wow. of the federal government, right? You know how many instances of that I've seen? The, 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 the Mindy documentary, Mindy Robinson, my business partner, the Route 91 shooting. Like a, like three weeks ago, Ron DeSantis is like wanting to wanting Florida to investigate the assassination attempt on Donald Trump because he's saying we never figured out what really happened in Las Vegas. Exactly. Like this is why, you know, when I say art is the greatest weapon, art is the greatest weapon. And I always knew that I would be targeted for this because when you make documentaries, when you when you do concise stories that tell you what's going on, there's nothing more powerful. It's like a court case, but it's even sexier than a court case because you're putting your case uh, forward, you're putting your case forward, and essentially what, what's happening is that you're giving it to the public in a very palatable way because reading a lawsuit is kind of tough. It's almost like a movie script versus the movie. Most people cannot read a movie script and imagine the movie, but when you actually make the movie, it's palatable by the masses. So this is why artists have been a threat to the elite because artists travel a very different circles of life. Like you could be a lawyer and you're pretty much – uh going to be stuck in a lawyer world right if you're an artist you're pretty much talking to you know i could tell you in my lifetime i've hung out with the richest of the rich and i've hung out with street guys that are pretty much you know criminals mm -hmm. not not criminals that i don't dis that i dislike i'll be honest with you because i know their circumstance i know kind of right. what they're doing and stuff especially when i was directing videos i mean i met a lot of people like that you know so um yeah, man, it's, um, you know, artists are scary to these people, especially when you know what to do, you know? Was there any mention when you were arrested or anything that would have given you indication that those guys would have been aware of, like, the documentary uh, or any of your work? I mean, they're calling me a sovereign citizen because of things that 
I think their misperceptions of stuff. Uh, oh, they said that I'm an anti-government type of person. Did you have and, something like this on your car? I'll, I'll tell you, what I have on there is fully legal. That's why I didn't get cited for it. Now, that also tells you what, what the sheriff's uh, knowledge of law and how he knee-jerk reactions based upon what is put out by the mainstream media. Like the word conspiracy theorist, by the way, you know, to stop people from questioning the JFK assassination. So now you have this, so they call sovereign citizens. Why? Because if you actually go down the so what is called the sovereign citizen uh, rabbit hole, and you go deep enough, see, sovereign citizens don't have credibility because it's a nonsensical term. It's a, it's, it's a misnomer, right? But if you spend more time and be like, wait a minute, you know, let me get down to the truth of it, and you get the trust law, you get the common law, you get the constitutional law, that's the stuff they don't want you to find out. So now they have this fear word where it's like, oh, these crazy sovereign citizens because they don't want you to find out what that study could potentially lead to and just like you showed your license plate if you have that license plate on a car and knucklehead like chad bianco sheriff chad bianco will say that's a homemade license plate right but i, I you know the hell is that right it's metal it's a private plate it's a private plate exactly yeah because private, because there's a traveling there's a traveling versus driving argument that we can get into like in future hmm. me and you blood have talked about this and yeah. the other thing too just so you know vim Blood has family members that would be in the category of Moors. Moors. Okay, so yeah. he's very he's very familiar. The more the more people who basically is like this, yeah, the yeah, black yeah. the black version of the the freedom movement. <laughs> yeah. I've actually bought I've actually bought one of their books. There's a really good one called um, for, I think it's called From Freedom to Slavery. I think, uh, okay. but that's a Moor guy. I remember him being one of those. Yeah. So, so what do you think about this upcoming election, man? And I want to get, I do want to get back to the documentary, but like, um, how do you feel about the current state? A lot of polls are showing Trump ahead. I don't, it's not that, that I don't believe them. I don't trust that our election process is actually. No, a lot of people are starting to turn on Kamala. Like the media spin starting to go down. Uh, she's it is. Lot, she's made a lot I, of bad appearances. Do you still the last right week, think her, that her trying to help black men and Obama trying to like? Make, yeah, that was horrible. What he did. That was a bad. Men. That was a bad. This, this is just getting to be a joke. That's all. Okay, but uh, what I'm saying is, do they do they let him win, or you know, what happens? What do you think happens on November fifth? Them. Are you voting for Kamala? Hey, <laughs> did you? Uh, remember I told you those four different possibilities of what could have happened here? Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, if I could break those down, I think that'll answer this question. So, if number one is self, uh, basically an anti-MAGA deputy sheriff that was making derogatory statements about MAGA. Then you have the actual sheriff, that's number one, right, who just wanted to cause me harm, you know, because he saw that I'm a Trump caucus captain, he saw my Trump team leader shirt, and uh, he was doing it for those reasons. Number two is Sheriff Bianco wanting to be in a higher office and thinking he's going to use this as a big media blitz, his 15 minutes uh, worth of fame. I think that's also a very highly likely situation. Number three yeah. is Bundy versus Deep State. Number four is something that I can't talk about in any detail. But what I will say is, as the America Happens Network, uh, we get a lot of tips. And could we have potentially stumbled on how they are going to commit fraud in 2024 could we have potentially stumbled upon all the details basically uh you know showing how this fraud's going to happen now this has not been shared with anybody but i'm very well aware that phone conversations are monitored uh, i know for example the owners of certain streaming companies i know that sometimes that leads to certain kind of intelligence operations of certain mm -hmm. intelligent you know, countries mm -hmm. and uh, i know the individuals that would understand how that works because they've been in the intelligence field you know and i don't want to give names on that topic because i don't know if they want to be mentioned but it's not hard to figure out when you watch some of our content especially recurring individuals that are constantly mentioned and the fact that we have relationships with those kind of individuals right so uh this number four is mm. now starting to become like a, as i'm getting more updates on what's going on and what's being found this is starting to become a, a, a good potential as to what's going on so yeah discredit the guy is there any great. is there any uh further detail you can tell us in the in their methods in in attempting to change or uh, rig the election this year is it the same 
or, or no different no method? it's not it's not i don't know if it's the same uh but what i would say is that it is like how could i say this it is a it, when it happens it's going to look very ridiculous to people now the question becomes how do the people react and are they going to just let it go uh frankly i think the only solution to a potential stolen election is um a breaking breaking up of the union right because we could have a texas republic as the as the somewhere in their uh capital right Mm -hmm. uh where you know now we have 20 something states and i'll tell you what's going to happen with that you're going to have a country that is going to go by constitutional values and it sucks that the union is going to be split but when we go by our constitutional values and the rest of the country becomes california guess what's going to happen it's going to be an unlivable shithole right <laughs> did my did my uh camera go off it's oh, bad. It's yeah, bad. yeah. yeah it's, bad. it's going to be yeah. an unlivable shithole and the property yeah. values are going to drop within 20 years this texas republic united states is going to buy the rest of the land all those people mm. are going to be like damn you know we really we fucked up hard you know what i mean it's going to suck but you know what a split united states is still a very powerful nation as long as it's a constitutional country and uh frankly i have more trust in texas than i do washington dc and rice you're you're i know you said you don't believe a civil war could happen in modern day because of how everything is segmented not kinetic not, kinetic, not pew, okay. pew, that's all i don't i'm well, not saying, I'm it's not happened in the we're, past we're, we're in the civil war we're in the civil yeah. war right but i just don't see it getting to the point that people are shooting each other I mean, there may be some instances, but I don't see it like we have. Uh, OK, right. Rice. We're not going to line up uh, and, and, and wait for the, <laughs> the enemy to shoot first and then we shoot second. No, we're not having that type of civil war. You're right. You know, and I mean, I, nobody, I, nobody's I, encouraging I, violence. I don't I, I, yeah, I don't I'm, believe. I'm, I'm definitely not down for violence, but there's a historical precedent to this. You know, this, there's a book called Operation Nemesis. If you guys read the any of the viewers actually reads the I guess the summary of it, the one paragraph summary, it's very similar to Operation, you know, the Munich uh, movie um, after uh, World War II, what happened there with, you know, chasing Nazis around the world. Now, this is not something I'm suggesting. This is not something that's even in my lane. But could I imagine a lot of very well-trained individuals, patriots that just had enough and there's something like an Operation Nemesis to put away you know, people that are committing crimes against humanity and there's enough evidence, you know, anything's possible. Anything's yeah. possible. I just don't think that these individuals that fought, died for the country are going are going to look at something that is criminal and corrupt and just kind of like be like, whatever, you know, and again, this is not my lane. I'm the storyteller. I'll be the guy that's documenting it. If it does happen, I certainly do not want this sort of thing to happen. And I've lived through civil war for a couple of years. I know what that looks like. I know what conflict looks like. It's not a video game. You know, I think mm -hmm. Americans, we've been too spoiled to think uh that this is kind of like something that is uh pretty much it's hell on earth you know uh and and i just uh yeah i i, I could see a lot of things happening then i quick, don't uh, see i don't see the people that vote democrat going going to the line going out there it's mostly going to be a compromised military if you ask me rice yeah exactly compromised you know, military see illegals yeah. illegals that are illegals, armed, right know? yeah mercenary right. army we yeah. talked about that me and seth uh, so i was in ago. chicago over the past week rice and i don't know if they're illegal i just know they're immigrants okay i'll leave it at that all right but all i know is that it's, it was a thursday night okay 11 o'clock and these people had their kids working for them on the street selling candy 11 o'clock at night on us on a school what, night where would you say, say that the majority of these people might have been from or is it a variety they look like they came from mexico i mean i don't know rice <laughs> i don't know right, right. from south of the border i put it to you that way but then it's the, just uh and they look clean though they were like they had crazy. adidas track suits on they were so they weren't homeless they had somewhere to go clearly but they had their kids out there peddling, uh, you know, candy and making money. It's just ridiculous, bro. I'd then love to drop. I'd love to drop something here on this topic. Line in the sand, the new James O'Keefe movie, absolutely a mm. masterpiece. I'm I'm a film snob. Uh, I know a masterpiece when I see it. James knocked it out of the park, and he's got the receipts. That's sad. There. What happened? 
with him what with if, James and and, and uh, his company, and they turned on him and stuff. That's a whole very yeah. yeah. But time. James is a James is a different level guy. I mean, I've hung out with him. We went hiking about a month and a half ago for like spent. I mean, we we're stuck on this hiking trail for three hours, so we had a good long conversation. I was at his premiere very supportive i actually wrote an article that i came and published right now because it's in my computer which is still impounded in my car but i'm eventually going to publish it explain why i think it's an absolute masterpiece but that shows you like i think like something like 60 billion dollars is spent on literally trafficking literally trafficking paying criminals paying criminal ngos to mm -hmm. facilitate this what's happening it is fully funded by our government like yep. other horrible things like covid and all that stuff right well, right so let's talk about this uh, Bundy. So that's the, what the I, land. What yeah. I wanted to ask real quick, and it's, it's related to it, is um, the the possible potential tips that you're talking about is a fourth scenario. Are are they potentially bigger than what's being exposed in the Bundy versus Deep State documentary, or is it like you think a combination of all of the above? You know, they're both daggers to the heart of the corruption. I mean, if this thing, if any of these things were to ever come to light, I mean, the, Bundy is actually filed. The, uh, yesterday, they filed just the missing exhibits. I think there was seven missing exhibits. So the case is now complete in the system and moving forward, right? So that's a dagger in the heart of all the corruption. This other thing is a dagger in the heart of all the corruption, too. But, like, this other thing's a little bit, I mean, it is, it's, you know... I don't even know what I'm doing this mess, to be honest with you, man. I'm just a documentary filmmaker. People give us tips. We pass the tips on to others. Uh, we interview people, and apparently that turned to be uh, turned out to be a good skill set to derive information and give it to the right kind of people. Uh, it's just massive. It's massive. If, if it's ever to come to light, you know, I mean, the Bundy versus Deep State thing's already come to light. This other thing, you know, it's uh, it just involves a lot of moving parts, you know? How long was Mike Little in the hospital sick, and what was the situation with that? So five and a half weeks between him getting ill and dying, uh, and it was undiagnosed illness, right? Uh, we caught that on camera, as you've seen in a documentary with the doctor saying he's undiagnosed, I think, like five days before he dies. Uh, and then they tag COVID onto it because, as we know, they make a whole bunch of money off the COVID thing. And, in fact, they use COVID protocols to take a man that was already 90% depleted mm -hmm. and to kill him off. Yeah, and, they, and by they, the way, one other thing, sorry to interrupt you guys. Yeah, you're good. You know, we are there yelling and screaming at the nurses and even the family. And then they excluded us because they said the family because they're not informed like us. They said, we're a bunch of conspiracy theorists. And three days later, Mike Little was dead. The, the, we were there five days before he died. He, at his request, we started giving him holistic medication. He started to get better. And then they kicked us out and he was dead in three days. Wow. Jeez. So did, did the it's Bundy family bad. know about this land? Um, and you can go in detail about this 155 million acres. Am I 100. correct? No, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 million, 11 and a half, man, 11 and a half million. Mm -hmm. Did the Bundys know about that prior to Mike Little uh, discovering all of this? Or was that something that was a uh, an after? Well, that was the one that was one of the biggest points of the argument, though, that the Bundys had was the fact that it's not government land that the that the animals. So they knew that crazy already. Land. But so, the, the government's trying to say, no, it is federal land. And that's kind of and, and technically the Bundys lost their case. They went to jail. They went to prison for a couple no, no, of years. They didn't. So let me clarify. Let me clarify some okay. of that. So but Clive and Bundy, you know, remember, Clive and Bundy's a rancher, right? But yeah. he knew that based upon his understanding of the Constitution, this was this was uh, not federal land, right? Um, but then it was, I guess, in a lock, in a suit, you need a little bit more specificity. You need a little bit more evidence. And this is where Mike Little comes in and says, look, you got the right... Uh, like you're, you have the right endpoint, but you don't have the best art, the best possible argument getting there. And that's what he and others that were involved in the case. And that's, what's important to remember. It's like in the documentary, uh, it, you know, intentionally so because Mike Little was alive, then he wanted to be the point person. He wanted to be the mouthpiece, uh, and other people were going to remain anonymous that were working behind the scenes, but also providing equal value in terms of their legal knowledge and approach. Right. Um, but then once Mike Little passed, 
you know, we're give, we're basically faced with an option. You know, as a filmmaker, I was faced with an option of like, do we just, uh, you know, put this away and, you know, kind of not be attacked by the deep state? Uh, or do we put this out there, right? And, you know, men step forward. I did my role in just, you know, finishing the piece, uh, getting it out there. And that's kind of where my work finished. I'm not really involved uh, in the, in the you know, lawsuit gotcha. aspect. Even though the lawsuit's published at the America Happens website, we did that so people could actually read the lawsuit and see that this is a real thing, real thing in action, which is kind of like what we like to do now, which is you got two courts of public opinion that are relevant. You got the court of public opinion, and then you got the courts. Now, the courts have been known to be uh, a lot, very corrupt. We've seen with the Donald Trump political persecution, you know, Elon Musk, you know, anybody that says anything, you know, Bundy, I mean, Bundy, like they use the courts as a way to shut people up and make their lives hell, right? So what works, so that's not working on its own due to the corruption. But you, if you got the court of public opinion, even if the lawsuit's lost and people know the lawsuit was lost, stolen, whatever you call it, that raises awareness and eventually that catches up to them. You know what I mean? It might take time, but that awareness knowledge, you know, this is the beauty of our, you know, First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of press. Uh, and that's why they want to stop that, because that is one place where, uh, you know, it's hard uh, to, uh, you know, let go of our freedoms by exposing the tyranny. Uh, this documentary, dude, is very well put together. Uh, you did a great job with it, man. I really appreciate you and America Happens. Um, having the balls to do this and i you know i even want to say something publicly that just something that kind of lit a fire under underneath of me when i was talking to ammon bundy i was telling ammon that i was a little apprehensive and paranoid about interviewing him about the saint luke situation because of the fact that he was sued for everything he has and um ammon said well that's not really brave of you is it chris mm. and yeah. i got called a pussy by ammon bundy so it made Round me, applause. It made me <laughs> <laughs> it really made me realize it made me realize like you know i i kind of took a, a step out of the fight for a little bit it, and, I, and i started to think about it more last night it, it was a lot after january 6th um numerous people i was there with uh had been visited by fbi um people i know uh, here in north carolina have been arrested Jim, were you in were you in washington on j6 dude you want to hear something crazy okay so i'm a devout follower of jesus christ man and i sincerely am and in the last two and a half years i've been much more aligned with that following the footsteps of jesus christ there's been instances in my life where random shits happen right one of those random things is i'm about to go to january 6th I get a call from a high school friend of mine. By the way, crazy enough, I later, later find out that he has, like, literally God-given ability that he hasn't told anybody about because he doesn't want to appear like a freak, almost like an X-Man, but, like, legitimate biblical gifts. And we've read about him, you know, the certain powers that, you know, uh, that people have, like discernment and, you know, ta talk, speaking in tongues and all that, you know? And he tells me, uh, you know, I haven't spoken to him in, like, six months, but he randomly calls me when I tell him I'm going to January 6th. He's like, don't. You're going to get arrested and uh, uh it's happened in a few instances in my life at crucial junctures where i've just had to follow instinct and instinct of others when he told me i thought he had a great point because he's like dude you're the kind of dude that's going to go film all this shit you're going to get into trouble you might get killed mm. i didn't i didn't go and um i'm fortunate i didn't go because they don't have that on me you know right right for sure that would be one one more thing that would be a, a problem for you a battle for you in the in the court and I safely yeah. I mean I haven't I haven't been visited by anybody I told you last night I was live on Facebook while people were breaking into the Capitol building itself while I was on a street right in front of it like right where the grass was I was in the street you can mm -hmm. hear a bunch of like um, young Christian groups out there singing hymns and, and things like that, which is the ironic thing because I'm hearing hymns and people singing all these like love Christian songs while people are supposedly being violent and breaking into the building it was it was like i told you i don't necessarily i didn't go there for the purpose of breaking into a building i went there to have our voice be heard and to take a stand because i have this philosophy that when enough people take a stand nothing can stand against the people but you actually have to have enough people i used to say that a lot i even got away from saying that so it's like mm. i've allowed this whole this whole thing to kind of drag me down a little bit and um when Ammon said that to me, it definitely gave me a fire. And then seeing what was happening to you and, and realizing that we could try to bring some attention to this, which we just lost him. So hopefully he'll be joining us. Whoa. Um, but there he is. Okay. Um, 
I guess before we uh, do anything else, I want to ask Seth because he's been real quiet. Sort of a few things. You got any questions, Seth? Anything you want to ask? Yeah, no, absolutely. I've, I've, been, I've been kind of waiting to see because uh, because I, I realized that Vem, you had, you mentioned the, the the four different possibilities that uh, in your mind made the most sense, um, and then you circle back to that. And I was wondering if at any point you you felt uh, confident at right now talking about the legal aspect of all this. I mean, I watched through. Uh, the piece that you recorded twice. It was gripping, man. Really. It uh, it was like I was on the edge of my seat listening through the, the personal story of, you know, of your account going through this. And you mentioned at the end something of a sort of uh, a sort of like an overall silver lining that you were looking at. Like, man, these guys, like, they really messed up. Like, they, like, tactically, they totally shot themselves in the foot by by going that last little bit of making it, of trying to defame you. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that much right now? Yeah. I mean, where, where's your head at? So we've already filed a lawsuit. A very prominent lawyer. I got approached by very prominent lawyers. I ran for office with one of these prominent lawyers in 2022. We had a relationship. These people all know. I mean, the thing that's been amazing is all the people that know me, they're like, dude, no, no way. You know what I mean? Either you're like an undercover sociopath on a different level of James Bond that's never existed in the history of humankind, or this is complete bullshit. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's like most people that never thought um, that I'm capable of this. But essentially, this lawsuit was filed yesterday. It's already gone public. It's already available on Pacer. It's filed in a Nevada uh, fat them over there. Hey, that was I love those. I don't know why they put the fat them pictures. I wish <laughs> I was like 50 pounds overweight there. But well, this anyway. is Roger Stone, like trying to come out and say good things about you, saying that you were falsely accused. I don't know if you saw that. I love Roger. I was on his show. We worked together. I actually did a short uh, 40 minute documentary about the JFK assassination. It was more of a podcast a very Ill illustrated podcast uh, that kind of feels more like a doc. I mean, I, the, the thing I like, I mean, I've always liked Roger Stone. I think he's a brave man. His JFK assassination book is by far one of the greatest. Uh, I believe um, he knows a lot more in terms mm. of specifics of who the shooters were. I think he had to kind of downplay some of that, but I think he gives enough information where it's pretty clear, uh, you know, uh, what his uh, what he knows, you know what I mean, and I think that Nixon connection. Uh, I think Nixon just flat out told him everything, and he had to just keep it in confidence so he doesn't get shot. You know, there's so many conspiracies too about like people like saying stuff about you personally. One thing I want to kind of clear up, if you don't mind, is uh, yeah. people have talked about since you've been involved in the music industry that you work directly for um, Sean Combs, aka P Diddy, aka Not the Diddler, Daddy, aka Love. Have, not have you video. not that I mean, it wouldn't matter if you did videos, but um, have you been to like, have you had any sort of relationship, working relationship with Diddy and or have you been to any of his parties, freak offs, white party events, anything so, so to that this, effect? This is the thing where I think people are just really stupid, really stupid, because my statements about Diddy are how much I despise him because he stole $30,000 from me. I wrote a music video for him that I was supposed to direct on the day of, and we had a contract. Uh, on the day of, he decides he's going to have his buddy basically direct my music video concept. I was already contracted, so I should have got my fee. So he screwed me over. He screwed so many people over stealing songs. I mean, Mace has been really public about writing mm -hmm. most of those hits and getting screwed over and not getting paid properly. Uh, in 2003 and 2004, I went, and again, you got to, again, like people, I got to do their research. The white parties were very different than these yeah, freak offs. The white yeah. parties were like you had, you know, even though, you know, Diddy's always been Diddy. The white parties were not, and by the way, there's different elements of the white party. There's like the white party areas where I wasn't hanging out, where I've heard, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, like homosexual stuff happening with Diddy and stuff, but I wasn't in those rooms. The main room of the white parties was just a party. Uh, there was a lot of prominent people there, and I just, you know, happened to get get into these things because I was directing music videos at the time. I had uh, you, you went home when Denzel went home, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you know, <laughs> we're directing music videos. I'm new in the business. I I haven't been screwed over by Diddy at this point. We're talking two thousand. I got screwed over by Diddy in two thousand five. So in terms of not paying me and stealing my music video concept and giving it to his buddy, you know, but in 2003, 2004, I, I was doing some, you know, really big videos with uh, DMX, Master P, a uh, whole bunch of people that made me a name. Actually, I was, it's funny, man. One of my videos that cost like like a fraction of what the Diddy video cost got nominated in the best video.
radio of the year category. I'm sure that got his attention. So I, I got sure. I got a couple of invites, went and hung out, you know, and, uh, you know, again, it's kind of like jumping these conclusions where, hey, just because this guy has a law abiding gun carrying citizen, he has yeah. guns. Therefore, he's here to assassinate the president. That kind of a ridiculous conclusion that, oh, I went to a party as this kind of young music video director that at that time was re excited to even be in that world, I don't know, 25 years old or whatever I was at the time. And, and you know, I just happened to go to this party, therefore I have to be a pedophile. So, you know which what I mean? Video, it's just crazy. Which video was yeah. it that you, you um, that did it was, so was stolen? It, it was one of his artists, uh, Boys in the Hood. And it was something to do with the, them oh, rapping on a block, something about a block. Boys in the Hood, the Jeezy, yeah. the, D, the Jeezy group. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. It was basically yeah. the video was like them, uh, you know, I think it was actually called Block Something or My Block or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, I wrote that concept. And uh, I just figured it'd be good to nice. kind of clear up some of these things. I, I know that some people have been like talking uh, negatively about Mike Flynn and there's some. I've got a contrarian question for weird you. Conspiracy about Mike Flynn, though. So and what do you say to people that are saying I've heard this once? Um He's he did this so that he 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 went and got arrested so that he can bring light to his documentary Bundy versus Deep State. You what know, do you say would, to people? That would be, be pretty genius. But, you know, the people, again, you got to think a little bit more deeper than the first layer of the onion. Like. Oh, you're oh. muted. You're muted. You're muted. Wait, did that cut out? Oh, uh, yeah, we got you now. Yeah, yeah we got you. Yeah, now. So, so how, how would I know that this would be the result that like, oh, I'm going to drive up there and I'm going to do every, the same thing I've done, which has been evidence has been heard by police officers in Nevada in terms of declaring I got, you know, guns in the trunk, going to this completely separate location. That's what's important to remember is these parking lots are completely separate locations because they don't have and I'm talking about there's usually minimum quarter of a mile distance half a mile, sometimes a mile, because one of the assassination techniques is via car bomb. So you don't have the parking close to the perimeter, right? That's just the way the security set up. So to me, I'm going to, not the rally, I'm going to the parking lot, then walking a great distance, which I, just by looking at it, I would estimate at least half a mile, if not more, to the actual rally. So there's a sequence of events there that, you know, there's a, there was a, a famous uh, financial like econ economist that talks about the human element and how it's unpredictable because you don't know how people are going to react. So I would have had to have some kind of Nostradamus godlike capability to know that, hey, this is going to lead to, you know, this is going to lead to this, this is going to lead to this, A, Z, right. you know, A, B, C, D, and then well, get to Z. And that's just not the way stuff happens. That's not, right. that's not the way the world works. It could have been that I showed up. I declared that, you know, hey, the same thing that I've done all the time. And then they shoot me. You know what I mean? It's like, right. you know, we don't yeah. we don't know what the human being. So so for. why? Yeah. OK, so why would you bring uh, a gun to a rally? I'm so going to ask a different question in a second related yeah, to that. So, so, so it, to clarify, that's what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to bring guns to the rally. I was taking my car to a parking lot and leaving the car there with the guns inside there, then walking to the rally. So that's a very uh, gotcha. different thing than actually uh, rolling up into, which is impossible anyways, because they got perimeters, they got security. It's not like, I mean, and my guns aren't the kind of guns that are used by assassins. We're talking about a Glock. With fourteen okay. bullets, and what we're kind of Glock? Are you Kamala? Are you Kamala? Because uh, are you saying Glock? Because that's what Kamala said, just Glock. But she didn't distinguish yeah. what kind of Glock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's Glock, Glock nineteen. I okay, I just make yeah. sure you know what you're talking about, there, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just yeah. saying Glock because Tupac used Glocks. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, and the, then the other the, was uh, shotgun. Yeah, yeah let me let me jump back and just ask really fast because yeah, like you're saying, these are not these are not like the usual suspects. If uh, if for example, they really wanted to frame you, if you were really the right guy, right? If you if you actually fit the description, right, and checked all the boxes, you would have already been previously contacted by somebody from the FBI in the last three to four months. They would have made uh, very conspicuous attempts to contact you directly. They would have absolutely directed you away from getting a shotgun and towards getting an AR-15 specifically. And mm -hmm. they would have made sure that, uh, that yeah, you also broke every possible regional law, which is, you know, all the California bullshit, like magazine restrictions and uh, mm -hmm. all the other, like, binding devices preventing you from actually being able to, you know, hold a firearm the way it was designed. But, like, all that stuff aside, what I was going to ask, I like that Blood asked you, like, why did you bring them? I'm going to ask you a more fundamentally free question, and that is, 
Why did you tell them? You had no responsibility to disclose. Mm. I mean, I guess honestly, not the best policy. I'll say that in Nevada, you know, the cops are often maligned and stuff uh, everywhere. But I got to say that, you know, Joel Lombardo, who, who my business partner actually despises, and she's been very vocal of it. I will give Joel Lombardo one thing that when he was sheriff, he became governor subsequently. Uh, I think he was, uh, it seems as though that force is trained very well. Now, let's talk about this, these guys right here. Now, as you get into my uh, not Van Miller account, I've started posting evidence there yeah, uh, you know, i got their, this put up here for you the, the tickets and then i'm going to keep posting evidence and i'm going to show 100 percent they're lying now the other evidence that's been posted is we've started doing deep background on this chad bianco sheriff character right and uh boy what are we finding about him i mean this guy is like the tony soprano he runs that police department like tony soprano they lost mm. a 7.5 million dollar lawsuit because of bad criminal behavior just weeks ago. Uh, we're getting reports, and actually I posted this, that he is limiting his own officer's gun rights if they get injured, like literally takes their guns away. And everybody's pissed off at that. Apparently half the police force hates him for doing that. He claims he was once an oath keeper, but then kneels with um, uh, BLM, right? Uh, you know, it's just the more you search on this guy, oh, other things like, you know, people getting bribed to uh, and bullied to cover up criminal behavior. Uh, another thing that's interesting is a lot of his inmates in, at the correctional facility there die from malnutrition. It's an outrageous number and has been criminally investigated by the federal government. So wow. the more you dig about this guy, other than him being completely full of shit with everything he said about me, uh, you also find out that this guy is a gangster. He's a gangster. And, you know, the crazy thing about what happened the other day is I found out he has a presence in Las Vegas and lo and behold, 12 rogue anti-terrorism cops show up to my parents' home and um, essentially try to intimidate and harass them. Luckily, a good friend of mine, Steve Sanson, who runs a group called Veterans in Politics, uh, was there to basically, uh, you know, read him their, you know, the riot act. They threatened to arrest him for obstructing of justice. And he's like, dude, what do you mean obstructing of justice? You guys don't even have a warrant. You're here illegally. And then my friend calls the sheriff of Clark County, Kevin McMahill. Kevin McMahill tells him he doesn't even know what's going on over there because he's away on holiday or something. And he didn't authorize this. And then a, an investigation's launched. And then I, I get a phone call from the head of the terrorism unit saying this was all a mistake. He wants to apologize that they're actually scared for my well-being. They have reason to fear my life because now this information's out and there could be some kind of nut that thinks that by killing me, they're actually helping to save the president's life because I'm a so-called assassin. So now uh, it seems as though there's two contingencies within the police department. Uh, one of them, you know, being, you know, probably if I was there that night when they showed up, you know, you flinch, they shoot you, I could have been dead. Uh, so though that's potentially that, you know, result. Well, yeah, so, but, but yeah. the, real quick, for the fact that the Secret Service nor FBI or any federal agent has or agency has contacted you, but you have police officers in Nevada coming to your parents' house when you're clearly not there is, uh, again, that's a little fishy. Uh, and what in that video, what did you say about your, your parents' age and health? Uh, 83, 70, and 77. My dad's 83. My mom's 77. My dad's of really bad health. I mean, 10 heart attacks in, three strokes, diabetes, high cholesterol. It's a miracle that he's even alive. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is the sort of thing that that kind of stress could literally give him a heart attack. He could die over this. And, you know, I'm sure that's kind of their goal, you know, and to, to put fear in me. You know, fear is always a tactic. Okay. Yeah, yeah but do you, you fear, thing, do you fear just, for so your them, life them, right now? Sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> no, that's um, that's a, probably a more immediate, important question. I want to ask you a follow up though. About yeah, whether do you or not fear, you, uh, how do you feel about your safety right now? Do you you feel okay, or are you worried, or how do you feel? Do you I have mean, any we'll, suicidal we'll, thoughts, any of that kind of stuff? No, 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 not at all. And I definitely am not suicidal. I'm a Christian. We don't do that. I'm, I don't suffer from depression. I don't sell, suffer from high and low emotions. I mean, I've been through a lot in my life in terms of being in high pressure situations that. You know, I think I'm, I haven't been stressed out. What I've been recently, I'll tell you, people asked me if I was angry yesterday in these interviews, right? And I didn't feel angry at the moment. I got to tell you, uh, I had a hard time.
hard time sleeping last night because I started feeling angry because now this picture is starting to come to light as far as the damage they've done to my life, right? Now, you know, I went shopping the other day because I need to buy clothes. There's people looking up at their cell phones, looking up at me, uh, mm -hmm. which for people that have seen the, you know, Fugitive movie with Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. Dr. Richard Kimball, it felt very much like being Dr. Richard Kimball. So I, I felt like I had to lock myself inside a house and be very careful of where, where I go out. Uh, some girl I was dating uh, broke up with me by text because, you know, she thinks I'm, uh, yeah, she thinks, you know, she's you're buying an assassin. Drink. Huh? She thinks you're an assassin. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, 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 and you know, it's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I mean, there's a huge ripple effect to this. And, you know, it's just because this one complete a-hole, and there could be more to it, like we said, you know, option right. one to four. But this, you know, what this one dude certainly was gleefully trying to use uh, the corpse of my... I think so. It, oh, it uh, muted, did, it, did it cut out? You yeah, just muted. Yeah, yeah. Muted every every time it every time it rings, it, it cuts out. But basically, this this sheriff is trying to use the corpse of my reputation on an international level to build a name for himself. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, which I see a lot of nasty things about because I left Hollywood with these not narcissistic characters that would sell their soul for fame. And there's no difference between this character. He's 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 a he's a servant to that like he's playing for the mainstream media and if you're like a true trump fan it's like that's not who you play with you're you're the guy like today these report i'm texting with these reporters showing them all the evidence i showed you guys right now thinking there's gonna be a follow-up and then they're like done and i talk a whole bunch of smack back i'm like oh god forbid you guys actually you follow the story you took the sensational part you shit on my reputation now you don't want to follow the story anymore right. you know how convenient so if you're like a true trumper you basically tell these guys to f off you tell them to their face what a bunch of cowards they are and 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 honestly they don't have any credibility because they were cool with releasing all that stuff they're cool with you know t uh, talking about this uh, sheriff letting him talk about all these lies uh, but when it comes to, you know what, let's follow the whole story to find out what the hell happened. By the way, there's a lot of outlets that are following it, a lot of outlets that aren't, that are mainstream, uh, especially now big lawsuits have been filed and there's a lot more information as to, you know, this guy being full of shit. Uh, they're not quite following that story, you know? Wow. Okay. So one, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, we were telling you we'd go to about 3.30 ish. So, I mean, if you need to bounce for any other commitments, definitely feel free to let us know. Uh, Could I hop in like four or five minutes? So that would be good because I just got there's so much stuff I got to attend to. But yeah. 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 Like I said, I, I wanted to totally be respectful of your time, man. I, I know I can connect with you on a private level. So if Blood and, and, and Seth have any like final questions or anything you guys want to ask in the last five minutes with him, it'd be great. By the way, my podcast is called Blood Money. Uh, so cool, cool. Oh, so there you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> you had to have me. You would have to have me on. Talk some crypto. Uh, oh, which yeah, you got? Sure. Which yeah, you got to uh, check out the the Rumble channel for sure. Um, which yeah. again is it's linked down below in the video description as well as the website americahappens.com so you can check out all the different contributors because that Matt Taibbi interviews on there the Ian Freeman uh, information uh, videos are on there there's a lot in that Route 91 documentary as well which I have on my waiting list to play How do you I feel to... about the election do you think Trump is is going to win or what, what do you think is going to happen here and with this information that I have, and we'll see how that plays out because it's premature uh, in terms of any assessment, you know, the level of fraud is so massive and ridiculous, potentially speaking, allegedly speaking, that another phone call, it, it might actually like, um, that might actually be the steal. It's although it might be getting to a point where even that starts looking ludicrous. Uh, and other and then another event is necessary. Let me put it that way, you know, yeah, so yeah. this is kind of like a chess game play by play. And, uh, you know, really, it just depended upon, you know, what happens. Do I think they're going to do everything in their power to pre prevent Trump? Uh, certainly so. Or certainly so. Yeah, nice. And that, before we let you go, I, I guess my only question was just about your your personal legal prospects moving forward. I mean, we kind of touched on it earlier, but as far as like not to be like cold or impartial you mentioned keeping an even keel you seem like emotionally you're in a better place today than you were yesterday um mm -hmm. but as far as like being able to uh exact a, a plan of justice for yourself i mean i won't say revenge but like he's filed um, a lawsuit I mean, did you know he filed a lawsuit against riverside county sheriff's and, department and you mentioned that it's our, that that's already available that's that's publicly available but mm -hmm. in the event that this thing drags out i mean do you see this thing being the kind of thing that that you'll that you'll have to divert some time to in order to 
be made whole on on some of the reputational damage and some of the additional like like you said uh some of the additional mudslinging and and this this sheriff trying to make a name for himself and all that do you think this might be more drawn out than just one suit um i mean it has so many facets at this point because it wasn't just the sheriff's department it was also some media outlets that like ran with it with no evidence right and they ran, ran with it very harshly I don't know how that's going to play out. I've been fortunate in this respect because I've actually, you know, I, I, I have the capability of actually filing lawsuits. I know enough law and I study enough law that I can file it. That would be the version that would take a lot of my time. This time I've been fortunate where uh, they've been, uh, there's been a lot of good people that have come forward. I certainly feel supported in this particular lawsuit. Uh, so right now it's not necessarily too, taking too much of my time. Uh, and I'm kind of, at this point, I just want to get my equipment back. Cause there's a lot of episodes we got to publish that are really good episodes. There's a lot of work to be done. And that's really my biggest thing right now, getting that stuff back. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the lawsuits are on cruise control. Obviously this one's filed and, uh, we'll see what happens, but there's a lot of attorneys there. I mean, it might even be that this particular lawsuit is uh, carried forward by the two attorneys involved in this one. There's others that are capable of doing other lawsuits so we're going to kind of play you know play day by day cool. got it okay. well i want to let people know again man if they want to follow you personally on uh x it's at not not vim miller and this is going to be down below in the video description as well uh you can follow you can check out americahappens.com that'll take you to the featured content and you can sign up for the mailing list and get all the different social media links you make sure you guys are following america happens network at america happens one uh, those documentaries that we mentioned, the Bundy versus Deep State and Route 91, they can be found on the Rumble channel. So I definitely encourage you guys to check those out, to check out Ben Miller's statement video, and then check out the update about what happened at his parents' house if you guys are interested in digging into the information further. So, yeah, and man, also, man. one quick thing if they go to AmericaAppens.com, we have a featured section because our Rumble page has like 8,000 things on there. But like if you go to AmericaAppens.com in that featured section, some of these things are actually, some of these documentaries are actually featured, including the Bundy one, my statement. I didn't post the thing about the Metro Police and what they did a couple of days ago, you know, with my parents and stuff. But uh, other selects are there, and that, that's a really good start if you want to kind of not dig through a whole bunch of things. Cool. Also, sorry, Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV were also on there. Yeah, I saw that on your website right below your social media links. It's pretty cool. I have to talk to you about that. For sure. So, Vim, again, man, yeah. thank you for your well, time, man. We really appreciate hey. you taking the opportunity to you know to do this. We really appreciate you being transparent, forthcoming, and I definitely want to encourage you to you know make sure you do everything you can to stay safe. Thank no, you, guys. Don't thank stay you. safe, Vim. Stay dangerous, my friend. Stay, stay dangerous. dangerous. Stay dangerous. Stay alive and stay dangerous. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, bro. All right, Thanks guys. for coming Thank on. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right. There you go. What do you think? That's... I believe him. Oh, my gosh. I believe I, him. I, I think that there's still a third version of the truth that is, that's very close to what. There's to always what a third version us. because there's right. always, it's, it's just dealing with two individuals. There's always three sides to the truth. There's, there's your version, three. that version, yeah. and the actual truth. Yeah. And, the, and that's just I think he's close. I think he's closer to the truth. And I also I, I, think. I think that I think that um, that sheriff was clout chasing. I think, I think that could be true, political. but I think I think it's a perfect storm of that sheriff clout chasing and him just needing to be a more seasoned gun owner and knowing when you disclose and when you don't. Because there's this thing called the castle doctrine. I wasn't going to beat him up over it personally, face to face. There's this thing called the castle doctrine Wait. where your car is treated like an extension of your home, and so things that are in your car are subject to the same types of legal protection. And you don't have to disclose unless you're asked directly in some cops, states. More so because cops can pull you over for any, any my, like I've seen videos where cops have gone out with news people saying, I could pull a guy over for this, 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 and this. And then it gives them probable cause for more. Yes. No, exactly. So, Dude. So yeah, they, actually like, have, yeah. they actually have more liberty with a vehicle, with a car, than they do your home. Uh, no, they, they definitely can. But here's the thing. Castle Doctrine is uh, is as a concept. What it's meant to do is is offer more protections for you in your car than you than you would just have out on the street. Right. For in, in any other way, because and since are, it was in his trunk, it, it's even further them needing yeah. warrants and all that to get. Right. And he's also that. said, he's he's, he said yeah. why he bought the guns, why he the, the guns, he said they have never been shot. They can, you know, all of this stuff can be very much proven. He's even said he's never went to a fight. Like he never, he went and bought guns to protect himself, but never properly but, in my opinion. That doesn't, based that off doesn't to matter. Learn. 
Yeah, no, exactly. He's not. Because, he's not because, quite there because he even said he did, he's never gone to a gun gun range or anything oh, to that okay. effect. So if, that. if that's the case, it's like you're really uneducated with what to do. So I understand where Seth is like he could have right. done this, 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 and this, but he just wasn't right. educated because it it wasn't it probably wasn't even something he was thinking about. And the fact that he was allowed to go to other events. And the fact that he wasn't planning on taking the guns to the rally, that it was a parking area. That's why it always says he was arrested outside of a Trump rally. He wasn't arrested in the Trump rally. And again, right. he's starting to drop all the all the information about his special invitation and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I think well, there was no, a, that's remember there was important. a guy that was arrested outside of. Um, yeah, but there's evidence uh, that that guy uh, was what, plotting. Was the RNC? Oh, I thought we were talking about the Trump golf course because that no, was no, not that one. There was another one, was another <sighs> one before the before the golf course. Incident. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, uh, was there a guy? Yeah, the, yeah, there's been so there much been fucking shit element. happening, man. Yeah, and I I, I feel bad. I, didn't, I actually didn't ask. Uh, maybe a relevant question would have been exactly what he was driving. Maybe he already mentioned it somewhere else. Because here's the thing: he may have just fit the description. This sheriff sounds like he's an incredibly lazy law enforcement professional. Right, who does who takes the shortcuts of like a profile a car? Look, if it's got a certain kind of rims, if it's a certain year, if it's a certain color, well, that's what they were like saying. The car, if, you, if you listen to the Riverside Sheriff's uh, press conference thing, they say that the car was in disarray, it was extremely messy and dirty, and they saw um, multiple IDs, fake IDs, and multiple passports, and his tags weren't what you would consider to be legal tags. And I'm glad, like, I'm glad this like sovereign citizen thing came up so that people can be educated because there is a fucking big, huge difference between lawful and legal because it is very possible for things to be lawful and illegal and things to be legal and unlawful. So if right. that is the case, they are not the fucking same. And it's the legal right. system with their word magic using different definitions of words that try to confuse the everyday citizen and that's, you know, that's where it's like people who are trying to look in how to exit the matrix. You're, you're deemed uh, crazy. Mm -hmm. I know you probably thought that about me when I was like going hardcore down that hole, which I'm Ooh. about me when I was going down. You're that saying hole, I thought you, you probably were... thought at some point there was something wrong with me. Not at all. OK, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, round of applause for that. Uh, yeah. I don't... I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm always, you know, but I'm a, I'm a data guy. I'm always wanting to know. My where thing the case is, where do we see that it's working? Because my we, thing is, we it, know it, crypto it, rich, right? Like we we yeah. had uh, we have a mutual who he I still haven't released this yet, but I did an interview with a guy out of London who claims that he's found a perfectly legal loophole or proper loophole to avoid paying his income tax in Great Britain and that he believes it works in the United States. We went through it. It's compelling stuff, but I haven't released it yet because like you said, there's certain things where like it can make sense and you don't seem crazy for wanting to learn about it and wanting to try to, to figure out a way to get past it. What's traveler. difficult is knowing what's difficult is knowing whether or not you're actually going to have any of the intended legal benefit. Right. Like some of the stuff is it's too esoteric and you come across a low information law enforcement professional like the sheriff and like, dude, the, the common the, like you're back at the lowest common denominator, which is an, like a, a dumb law enforcement professional. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, why, I, that's that's the bone I had to pick with with uh, Barabbas and, and hit all of his efforts and such. It's like, yeah, you might be on paper. Correct. But the application of that. And standing up in a corrupt court, you're you're asking for a corrupt court to favor you, and that's never going to happen. You see what they did to Donald Trump. They, I mean, if they'll do it to a previous president, they'll do it to anyone. Yeah, yeah, so, but I think I think people like it, it sucks. It's like when I went down the law rabbit hole, I came to one one of the conclusions I came to is that basically we need to completely fully understand the legal system in order to operate within it, or the other way around of figuring out how to get out from under it. You have and, to get out from under it. You but understanding no it, you, there's people, there are people that I've interviewed that, and I've talked to and, uh, and I have been around that will go into a courtroom and will just shut those fucking judges up. That will shut all those attorneys up to the point that they don't want to, they, to have that person in the court and they dismiss shit. Okay. Now uh, well, there's that guy from high frequency Banner. radio, Yusuf L he's one. Uh, there's a guy that I've interviewed, Carl Lentz. That's one. This guy, Alphonse Fagiello. These guys will talk fucking circles around fucking uh, people who take the bar exam. And the Bannister guy, the former IRS uh, agent, he went up against them and won. 
Yeah, well, but he I had understand. a he had attorney representation. But you, you're dealing with a Boy Scout. You know that guy had a clean. Like, he was clean as a whistle. Yeah, there was nothing bad anybody could say about this guy who said, "I can no longer work for the IRS because I have found taxation of labor to be unconstitutional, and I took an oath to the Constitution. Therefore, I cannot work for this entity anymore." Bounce. Bye. And I'm not paying taxes anymore, too, since 1999, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Amen. but you definitely like David saying, you definitely got to know your shit. Um, I'm glad that, that we got to do this, the three of us together and try to have this on as many platforms while we were streaming. I'm thinking like right now we got 310 people watching, which is the most amount. This stream, obviously, I feel like has been suppressed because other streams that we do on other topics have more viewers. So I feel like that's why I was trying to encourage people to share this one out because um, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a lot of people that are going to interview him and have him on talking about some of the stuff that we talked about as freely as what we talked about. So I like to think that what we did today is a service for people to get a better comprehension and understanding about the situation from what actually yeah. happened without some spin bullshit media thing kind of being added to it. Right. Yeah. So, um, you guys got anything you want to add? No, nah, that was fun, man. I like yeah, I like yeah, venturing a little bit away from crypto, you, though. You, you I want, mean, this bull market this. is going to come back. It will, but I may not be with it. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, me either. <laughs> All right. The thing is, I own crypto, and I will always, yeah. you know, I will always be in the game. I'm just not a hundred percent sure how much I'm going to continue participating in the circus of crypto YouTube. Got it. Uh, Got it. What it, one? It's like all, all the all my peers are most all my peers are pure embarrassment at this point. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, and and, and crypto, crypto, I thought you were street smart, bro. I mean, it doesn't matter what I do. Crypto I never you were really street smart, bro. Crypto that never was... really fucking cared. I mean, I, as all all the big fucking interviews I did, I remember in the beginning of 2020, I was around 3,000 subscribers. It was when I switched over and started doing the other content, the Stranger Than Fiction shit, that my channel started to actually grow, to actually have comments, to actually have interaction and actual things happening on my channel like they're supposed to versus a bunch of lazy crypto people who don't want to subscribe to your channel. Who oh, don't they want, want to listen, the crypto people want this. <laughs> and it's just getting sad so yeah i mean i've I've been saying it for quite some time you know i may do something um that has some crypto aspect possibly in the future but man it it's uh, this is starting to become a dead end and at this point it's like everything that we kind of fought for for this shit and a lot of people have fought for is it's just being taken away and no not it's not the it's not the same crypto industry crypto uh industry no it's this is the it's this a, is it's a 180 it's a complete it's the, it's the black rock block stream party and i'm not i don't want to yep. be a part of it yeah shout out to uh the gentleman of crypto i saw their stream this morning i saw oh nice one it... half of the gentleman of crypto was back they fell out i have to get more information on that is drama. the is the is the zed part gone yeah yeah <laughs> that's the only way i know to say it nicely in a weird way yeah it's kind of obvious but yeah Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if there was a one man show and it didn't include the Zed, then I think people know it's up. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Inquiring. So, no, that's it, bro. Uh, this has uh, been a great stream. Thanks, Rice, for putting that together. That's epic. And All good. I, now, now I have to figure out a way to one up you. <laughs> I might just have to call Elon. Yeah, He's get Elon on. That, that would definitely be a one up on me. And you know, it's crazy. Go, I don't want to jump out there too. I'm going to have to build up to it, you know? And real quick, before you wrap things up, I want to say like, it's, it's crazy how this thing transpired because I was trying to get in touch with them. I did want to do an interview with them. It was intent. I, I intended for it to be one-on-one. -on -one. We talked about what we were going to talk about today, yesterday, and we decided to talk about this very situation. Um, so after talking to them, I, I was like, I have to, you know, it was, to me, it felt like it was everything kind of was like rolling a carpet out for this to happen it's like we decided to already talk about this before vim yeah. agreed to even do this and it right. just happened yeah. to work out that we were able to get the motherfucker himself yeah that was yeah. dope man that was yeah. dope so i would encourage people after this video comment on all of our channels on this video 
share the video out. If you're watching on X, please repost it so we can get more eyes watching this video because there's 314 people watching and we can amplify that with your help because that's how this thing works. This is not just, we can't do this alone without a community. And at this yeah. point, we really need our community to help us get out of the shadows. Like if you got a Spread flashlight, yeah, shine your flashlight and share this information. Uh, any final thoughts or anything you want to say before we wrap up guys? No, this is a lot of fun. I, I'm looking forward to uh, to blood one upping you with that on, on the next <laughs> next guest. You, you, I mean, you know some people too now. I'm, I'm just saying. Now, I'm, not, I'm not 100 percent sure I can do next week. I'll let you guys know, but uh, I'm not All against right, continuing cool. doing this. It's just I'd like to stay out as much as possible of the blockchain crypto element. Barabbas, so, we want Barabbas back. Got it. So ladies and gentlemen, again, smash the like button. Please make sure you subscribe to all of our channels, following us on all of our socials. We are streaming on all three of our YouTube channels, all three of our X accounts, my Rumble account. We have links down below in each other's video description for each other's social media links. So make sure you support all three of us. If you have not already, that would be greatly appreciated. Before we wrap things up, I encourage you, as always, to be a blessing to others. Treat people how you want to be treated. Be the glitch that you want to see in this matrix. Be the change that you want to see in this world. Question yourself. Question everything. And then know yourself. And until next time, practice change. Man, I am having, I don't know what is up with this. It's like somebody's trying to like screw me up on my computer. I'm sure. <laughs> Man, life and liberty, these values. There you go. I was going to back you up with the beatbox. I'm trying to restart it. Yeah, let me stop it so I can get this thing right. Here we go. We can just clap our hands and you can go shout to out to the Shout out to the handlers trying to fuck up my stream. Because <laughs> I know you're listening. Blood. Detroit flow. From the team. And as a matter of fact, this is the best way to stay. We're going to be listening to everybody who's on this stream at this point. So you motherfuckers are guilty by association. Yes, indeed. Got my eyes on the charts, ain't no time to sleep. Kick that money, gotta keep it creep. That's my crypto blood, just the toast on the line. Stacking my coin, got the market on my mind. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum too. Cash is king, but I'm looking for a new move. I know the culture of the market, like the streets. Got my finger on the pulse, can't nobody beat. I see the trends, I see the flow. Got my strategies in place, you know. Yo, it's NYBZ on the mic coming through the mist. Talking crypto and privacy things you can't dismiss. These hoops, wild jungle, I'm the lion, can't resist. Gotten through the blockchain, teaching about the risk. Mind your biz, don't miss. Eeny, meeny, miny, biz, we on a privacy blitz. Except in the mist, dropping knowledge with no tricks. YouTube to the wallet, keep it tight, no rapes. Click clack, I hack the facts, that's how I attack from Bitcoin to Monero, stacking privacy back. You two got eyes, but I'm the cloak in disguise, and while we on the rise, educating the wise. Mind your biz, don't miss, eeny, meeny, miny, biz, we on a privacy blitz. Except in the mist, dropping knowledge with no tricks. YouTube to the wallet, keep it tight, no rapes. TVX, the Mike's Live Wire, American Pitbull, real gold buyer, sound money advocate, rights defender, in the crypto arena, he's the top contender, from the gritty streets of the digital age, right slays wisdom, chapter and page, silver gold, he scores only the bold, land life and liberty, these values hold. Constitution, deep dive, knowledge, revival. Navigate the system critical for survival. Rice engraved like inscriptions on metal. Pitbull in the 